Cambridge English, first three, tests one to four. Published by Cambridge University Press and Uckles, 2018. This recording is copyright. CD1. This is the Cambridge English first listening test, test one. I'm going to give you the instructions for this test. I'll introduce each part of the test and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You'll hear each piece twice. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question paper. You'll have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You'll hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer. A, B, or C. Question 1. You hear a woman talking on the radio about an actor. Like many actors, he always seems to be in the news for one reason or another. I know celebrities can be given a tough time, but he seems to get off relatively lightly. He's in loads of movies these days, and so he should be. His performances were fairly patchy when he was starting out, in my opinion, but that's never the case these days. And the signs are he'll continue to develop, especially now he's getting to play lead roles in popular theatre productions too. If you ever get the chance to see him on stage, you won't be disappointed. Otherwise, catch him at a cinema near you. Like many actors, he always seems to be in the news for one reason or another. I know celebrities can be given a tough time, but he seems to get off relatively lightly. He's in loads of movies these days, and so he should be. His performances were fairly patchy when he was starting out, in my opinion, but that's never the case these days. And the signs are he'll continue to develop, especially now he's getting to play lead roles in popular theatre productions too. If you ever get the chance to see him on stage, you won't be disappointed. Otherwise, catch him at a cinema near you. Question 2. You hear a hairstylist talking about her career. You initially started off doing the hair of models in the fashion industry. What made you move to TV? The fashion industry turned me off quite a bit, actually. I didn't like working with people who had such a high opinion of themselves. My attitude is that you should treat everyone the same, and I found I was constantly having to bite my tongue because of the way I was treated there. The TV is different. It's much more a case of being respected for what you can offer regardless of your status, and that suits me. The TV people acknowledge you as a fellow professional, and they're much more down to earth. You initially started off doing the hair of models in the fashion industry. What made you move to TV? The fashion industry turned me off quite a bit, actually. I didn't like working with people who had such a high opinion of themselves. My attitude is that you should treat everyone the same, and I found I was constantly having to bite my tongue because of the way I was treated there. The TV is different. It's much more a case of being respected for what you can offer regardless of your status. And that suits me. The TV people acknowledge you as a fellow professional and they're much more down to earth. Question 3. You hear a comedian called Jeff Knight talking on the radio about his profession. When I'm doing my comedy act at theatres or clubs or on TV, 
I'll often get my ideas from keeping my ears close to the ground. I try to pick up on all the strange and humorous everyday stuff, sometimes even boring, that you get in life, and I build it into my act. Obviously, I do also get ideas from listening to other comedians too. I like to think that three generations of one family can sit at my show and know they won't feel threatened because I'm not rude. Even in big arenas, people feel like I'm talking to them individually. It's a comfort thing for them. When I'm doing my comedy act at theatres or clubs or on TV, I'll often get my ideas from keeping my ears close to the ground. I try to pick up on all the strange and humorous everyday stuff, sometimes even boring, that you get in life, and I build it into my act. Obviously, I do also get ideas from listening to other comedians too. I like to think that three generations of one family can sit at my show and know they won't feel threatened because I'm not rude. Even in big arenas, people feel like I'm talking to them individually. It's a comfort thing for them. Question 4. You hear a conversation between a customer and a coffee shop employee. Excuse me, could someone come over and clear one of the tables in the window, please? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. We've just had a really busy lunch break, and between you and me, my colleague's new and hasn't really got the hang of things yet. Yes, you look as if you've been really busy. We should be able to get straight now. It's a bit quieter. I'll get my colleague to come and clear your table right away. Hmm, it certainly needs it. Anyway, what can I get you? Coffee and cake, or...? I'll just have coffee, please. And I'll get a cloth to wipe the table. Excuse me, could someone come over and clear one of the tables in the window, please? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. We've just had a really busy lunch break, and between you and me, my colleague's new and hasn't really got the hang of things yet. Yes, you look as if you've been really busy. We should be able to get straight now. It's a bit quieter. I'll get my colleague to come and clear your table right away. Hmm, it certainly needs it. Anyway, what can I get you? Coffee and cake, or...? I'll just have coffee, please. And I'll get a cloth to wipe the table. Question 5. You hear a man telling a friend about an art exhibition. Hi, Mark. How did you like the exhibition? It was all right, actually. I've got the catalogue here. Would you like to have a look? I don't usually bother with them personally. They've always felt like a bit of a waste of money. I know what you mean. But somebody lent me this one. So, what's the gallery like? Really cool. Using natural light to show off the paintings saves energy, too, you know. I expect it was crowded. Well, I'd expected there to be masses of people, so I wouldn't be able to see anything. In fact, I nearly had the place to myself. Hi, Mark. How did you like the exhibition? It was all right, actually. I've got the catalog here. Would you like to have a look? I don't usually bother with them personally. They've always felt like a bit of a waste of money. I know what you mean. But somebody lent me this one. So, what's the gallery like? Really cool. Using natural light to show off the paintings saves energy, too, you know. I expect it was crowded. Well, I'd expected there to be masses of people, so I wouldn't be able to see anything. In fact, I nearly had the place to myself. Question 6. You overhear a man ringing a sports shop. Hello, Colin Fogarty here. I was in the shop last week and bought a pair of the new Comfort football boots. I asked about a discount I'd heard about from members of Kirkley Rangers Football Club, which I'm a member of. The assistant was by herself and said she didn't know anything about it. I then checked on the football club website and it confirms what I thought. I emailed you at the shop this morning and was told that the shop gives special discounts for official club purchases, but I'm still not sure whether the discount is applicable to ordinary club members like me, so I thought I'd better ring and sort it all out. Hello, Colin Fogarty here. I was in the shop last week and bought a pair of the new Comfort football boots. I asked about a discount I'd heard about from members of Kirkley Rangers Football Club, which I'm a member of. 
The assistant was by herself and said she didn't know anything about it. I then checked on the football club website and it confirms what I thought. I emailed you at the shop this morning and was told that the shop gives special discounts for official club purchases, but I'm still not sure whether the discount is applicable to ordinary club members like me, so I thought I'd better ring and sort it all out. Question 7. You hear a man telling a friend about his work. So you've been at the company for five years. How do you feel it's going? Well, the boss sees me as someone who'll go far, but I don't really know if I want to. I mean, I've seen what happened to Joe, who was promoted last year to sales manager. At the time, I thought, lucky him, but he isn't enjoying it. The working environment isn't as friendly and supportive as it was when I first joined, mainly because of all the targets we've been set. Sad that management feels the need to play with what was a winning formula. Still, let's see what the future brings. So you've been at the company for five years. How do you feel it's going? Well, the boss sees me as someone who'll go far, but I don't really know if I want to. I mean, I've seen what happened to Joe, who was promoted last year to sales manager. At the time, I thought, lucky him, but he isn't enjoying it. The working environment isn't as friendly and supportive as it was when I first joined, mainly because of all the targets we've been set. Sad that management feels the need to play with what was a winning formula. Still, let's see what the future brings. Question 8. You hear two people talking about a country walk they're doing. Are you feeling tired? No, I'm fine. Just stopping to look at the scenery. It's beautiful, isn't it? Fabulous. But keep moving. It's too cold to stand still. Well, we knew that when we set off. The forecast's better for tomorrow. I did say we should wait. Sorry, I know, but let's carry on because there's only another five kilometres to go. Right or left here? Uh, left, I think, according to the map. Five kilometres, you said. It'll be just about dark when we get to the end. If we do get there. <laughs> I'm only joking. Are you feeling tired? No, I'm fine. Just stopping to look at the scenery. It's beautiful, isn't it? Fabulous. But keep moving. It's too cold to stand still. Well, we knew that when we set off. The forecast's better for tomorrow. I did say we should wait. Sorry, I know. But let's carry on because there's only another five kilometres to go. Right or left here? Uh, left, I think, according to the map. Five kilometres, you said? It'll be just about dark when we get to the end. If we do get there, <laughs> I'm only joking. That's the end of part one. Now turn to part two.